Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, today I'm going to try and do the first of my gun reviews here. Uh, it's, it's not really a very good day for it. You know, we've got storm clouds overhead and high winds, but you know, I, I actually I set the camera up in the truck you know, with the window rolled down and the camera pointing out the window, so hopefully it'll be shielded somewhat from the wind and you won't get quite so much wind noise. It might have been better to just wait for a nicer day, but the thing is there's a gun show tomorrow and one of the guns that I wanted to review I'm possibly going to be trading off, so I figure if I'm going to review this gun I should probably do it today. And uh, the gun I wanted to review here is the Taurus Model 44. It's a 44 Magnum revolver. You know, if, if you look on, on, on YouTube here or pretty much anywhere else, most of the gun reviews that you find are for new guns. You know, an, an expert you know, buys or is given a, a brand new firearm. You know, he takes it out, tests it out, you know, and gives you sort of his first impressions of the firearm. And certainly there's value in that. Uh, I'm, I'm not knocking those people at all. But my personal experience has been that a lot of the things that I would have liked to know about a gun before I bought it, I don't really find out until I've owned it for a few years and put a few thousand rounds through it. And so my goal in, in these reviews is to present uh, what I've discovered about guns that I've owned for a long time, uh, and thereby save you the trouble of finding this out on your own. So anyway, like I said, this is the Taurus, uh, I think it's a Model 44, it's a 44 Magnum double action revolver, six shot, it's not the tracker. Um, this is actually the first 44 Magnum I ever purchased. I, you know, I, I do a lot of hiking in grizzly bear country, and I figure the 44 Magnum is sort of minimum wage for grizzly bear defense, so I wanted a 44 that was compact and, and yet still packed a punch and it basically came down to three choices the Taurus, the Ruger, or the Smith & Wesson. They all make a gun that looks very similar to this four inch barreled six shot uh, 44 Magnum. The, the difference between the three is mostly in price. You know the Taurus costs uh, between four hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars the Smith & Wesson costs between 750 and 800 and the Ruger is somewhere in between there. Um, the, the Taurus and the Smith & Wesson look very similar. The Ruger is a little different. It's a little blockier. Uh, it's a little heavier. I didn't want to carry the extra weight, so I kind of ruled that one off, uh, or ruled that one out uh, up front. And so it basically came down to a question of, is it worth spending the extra $300 on the Smith & Wesson? Uh, or will the Taurus do the same thing for $300 less? And I couldn't see any difference up front between the two guns, so I went ahead and bought the Taurus. Later on, you know, after I'd put a few thousand rounds through the gun, I was to discover that there is a critical difference between the Taurus and the Smith & Wesson. Specifically, and I know you can't see this on the camera, maybe I can uh, come up with a computer animation or something that'll show it uh, graphically later on, but there's a lug at the bottom of the cylinder that locks the cylinder in place during firing to make sure that the chamber is aligned with the barrel. And as the action is cycled, as the cylinder rotates to bring a new chamber into position, you know, that lug has to first drop out and then re-engage after the cylinder is rotated. Now, on the Smith & Wesson, if you, you know, if you watch that lug and slowly cock the hammer to, to cycle the action, you'll notice first the lug drops out of the cylinder, then there's a slight gap before the cylinder starts to rotate. And that provides a measure of safety to ensure that there's never any binding there. With the Taurus, the cylinder starts to rotate the instant that the lug drops out. And so after the gun has been shot quite a bit, you know, after the parts have had a chance to wear in a little, there's a possibility that the, the bar that rotates the cylinder can engage before the lug is completely disengaged. And what happens then is the cylinder locks up. Now, it's real easy to clear the lock up. All you have to do is lower the hammer, you know, tap the cylinder a little maybe, and, and then slowly cock it again. Um, and I don't think I've ever had a problem with cylinder lockup double action. Even shooting at single action, it's pretty rare. You know, maybe one out of a hundred shots it might do it. 
So, you know, if you're just using it for target shooting, if you're using it for hunting, it's probably no big deal. Given that my primary purpose in carrying this gun was for self-defense, I was thinking, you know, if that cylinder locks up at just the wrong moment, the consequences could be pretty severe. So I ended up going back and buying a Smith & Wesson version of this later. I'll probably review that gun in a separate episode. But uh, for today, I just wanted to talk about the Taurus. You know, that's the main problem that I've found with the Taurus, uh, you know, in, in the years that I've had it and used it. One thing I do like about the Taurus, other than the fact that it's cheaper, which I obviously like, but one thing I do like about the Taurus uh, is that the recoil is very controllable. You know, the gun is just a little bit heavier than the Smith & Wesson. Not a huge difference, but is a little heavier. Uh, this lug extends out a little further. That might be part of it. It's also got the porting, which the Smith & Wesson doesn't. Um, I'm not sure if it's, you know, if, if it's the porting or the extra weight uh, or a combination of those factors, but whatever it is, the, the recoil of the, of the Taurus is much more controllable. You know, I can I can take this gun out and shoot full power rounds all day, and I may get tired, but I'm not going to come home with bruised or bleeding hands from the recoil, uh, as I have shooting some of the Smith & Wesson guns. Anyway, I think that's about all I wanted to say about the gun, so uh, let me set up some targets and switch the camera to my hands-free shoulder mount, uh, and then we'll go ahead and do some shooting with this gun. Okay, so I've got some targets set up here. I guess uh, one thing I did forget to mention about this gun is that I did put custom uh, wooden grips on it. You know, regardless of whether you buy the, the Smith & Wesson or the Taurus, most of these modern revolvers come with absolutely awful monolithic rubber grips. Um, so I, I got some uh, New Mexican mesquite wood. That's my favorite wood to work with for custom gun stocks because it's extremely hard and it's also got a very pretty grain structure. Um, but, you know, I just carved that to fit my hand and I wind up with a grip that not only looks better, but more importantly, it's more ergonomic, which in turn makes shooting uh, more intuitive and allows me to shoot more accurately and faster. So I, I just thought I should mention that, that I have put custom grips on this thing. Um, and now let me go, go ahead and squeeze off a few shots. Uh, the, I've loaded the cylinder with uh, the first three rounds are uh, 44 special ammunition, and then the next three are full power magnum loads. So if we just shoot some of these steel targets here. and then try a milk jug. And like I said, that's just 44 Special. You know, it's got relatively little recoil. Uh, it's very controllable. Move up to the Magnum loads. Yeah, so there again, even with the full power magnum loads, the recoil is really no big deal. Uh, so, very controllable, but still definitely packs a punch. 